Hey there. So welcome to this first and most important topic in your cloud journey. Or if you're just starting out learning cloud, first thing you should know is about cloud service model. And in this video, I'm going to tell you about three common service models. That's infrastructure as a service or IAAS, platform as a service that's PaaS, and software as a service that's SaaS. But before I continue, let me tell quickly about me. My name is Atul Kumar. I'm an Oracle Ace awarded by Oracle since year 2006. I'm also author of few books on Oracle. And before I tell you about cloud service model that's SaaS, PaaS, IWS, let's first understand what exactly is cloud computing means. Word cloud computing normally means delivery of computing services over the internet. So services include things like your servers, storage, networking, databases, applications, or anything that you can do on premise, doing it on the cloud or remotely outside your office premises. Now, the most common question when I tell this definition to my students is why then we are already doing on premise or a managed services. How is cloud computing difference or different from managed services? So cloud computing has some specific properties or characteristics. And the first and the most important is multi-tenant, which means there are more than one customer who are using the same infrastructure. They will not be able to see each other's data, but underlying infrastructure is used by more than one tenant or one customer. It's self-service, which means customers can go and create their own instances, applications, databases, storage, servers, etc. It's elastic scale up or scale down, which means on as demand increases, you can increase your computing resources, you can increase your applications, databases, and as your demand goes down, you can reduce or decrease them. It's web-based, browser-based, it's automated. You There's no human intervention or most of the time, this it's all automated, no human intervention required. It works in pay-as-you-go model, which means you pay what you use. So if you're not using services, you can shut down environments and then don't pay for those services which you're not using. It's web-based integration, uh, which means there are integrations possible across multiple customers, including on-premise. And contrary to what common belief is, uh, cloud is much more secure. And when I say secure, it's mainly if you're working with tier one cloud vendors. So when I say tier one cloud vendors, I mean cloud vendors like Amazon, Google, Oracle, or Microsoft. So these are some of big cloud vendors like Oracle, Google, Amazon, IBM, Alibaba, Microsoft. These are mega scale vendors or in cloud, they provide cloud services. There are other cloud vendors as well, but, but the main you should be, or primarily if you work, you should be working for these mega scale vendors they have their security or they are working actively on improving or making cloud secure. So now once you know the cloud vendors, let's start looking at this cloud service model. As I said, this is the first and most important thing you should know so that then you can see in which field you want to specialize or in which field you want to go further down or learn more in terms of cloud. Do you want to go software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service? I'll also tell you based on your background, which one you should start with or which one should you focus first. So if you're a DBA, which one you should pick? Or if you're an apps DBA, if you're a system administrator, if you're a functional consultant, which one to pick first? But before I tell you about that, let's first look at these three service models. So what you see on extreme left-hand side, this is traditional on-premise, your deployment or IT setup where networking, storage, servers, virtualization, operating system, middleware, applications running on middleware, data, or applications, entire thing is managed by customer or client in client's premises. So that's called as traditional on-premise deployment. And this was very common till 2003, 4 or 2006 till Amazon came. So this was traditional on-premise model. Then you have infrastructure as a service. In infrastructure as a service, 
the networking layer, the storage layer, the servers layer, and the virtualization layer. These layers are provided by the cloud vendor. And anything on top of that, like operating system like Windows, Linux, Solaris, or any other operating system on top of that, or middleware like WebLogic, application server, web servers, databases, all those are and managed by client. So anything till virtualization, it's cloud vendor's responsibility. After that, applications, data, runtime, middleware, operating system, all managed by client. So this is infrastructure as a service. So you have a vendors like Amazon, who is leader in infrastructure as a service, but then you also have Oracle, Microsoft Azure, or IBM, or Google Cloud. These are infrastructure as a service vendors or cloud providers. Then you have a platform as a service. So in platform as a service, cloud vendor will manage everything, including in, in infrastructure as a service. And on top of that operating system, the middleware, the platform like databases or application or runtime executables on those platform, all this is managed by cloud vendor. So for example, if you're a DBA, the databases will be deployed by the cloud vendor or if you are a WebLogic administrator, application server administrator, then your platform will be managed by the cloud vendor. They will give you all the necessary tools, but on top of that, the data or the applications running on top of that platform, it's client managed. So in platform as a service till runtime or till applications running on top or as a platform, those all things are managed by cloud vendor. Data and application running on top of those platform is the responsibility of the client. And then th third and is software as a service in which everything including data and application is managed by the cloud vendor. So example of the software as a service like your Gmail account or your Dropbox account or your Fusion applications if you're working on ERP, CRM, SAP on the cloud or Oracle on Fusion applications on the cloud or Salesforce. These are some of the examples of software as a service. So just to do a quick recap, you have infrastructure as a service, which has networking, storage, servers, virtualization managed by cloud vendor and anything above that is responsibility of the client. Platform as a service, everything in infrastructure and on top of that you have platforms like databases or application servers or web servers or any necessary tools like IoT applications or machine learning, all these platforms are managed or provided by cloud vendor. And then software as a service, everything is provided by the cloud vendor. All you need is a license. So just to elaborate a little bit more, it infrastructure as a service mainly it's storage, compute, networking. And these days now there's a lot more has been added into these. So on this infrastructure as a service, so like as services, so things like your DNS servers, load balancers, VPN connectivity, or your email service provider, all those are part of infrastructure as a service. Now, if you're looking at Oracle and in future videos, I'm going to go more about in detail about this, but Oracle, these are offerings from Oracle within infrastructure as a service and Oracle has a two main categories or two main infrastructure services. One is called as OCI, which is Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and second is Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Classic. So in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, you have bare metal or what you see on a without virtualization layer and virtual virtualization or VMs or virtual machines. So you have offering from OCI, which gives you bare metal or you have an option of virtual machines or you have a classic which or classic method, which was only on virtualization or hypervisor based offerings and then you have other offerings as well in Oracle's infrastructure as a service. Now this is a topic in its own. So um, in future posts or future videos, you'll be see a lot more about OCI and OCI Classic as well. But this is Oracle's offering in infrastructure as a service. If you look at a platform as a service, your applications like your collaboration suite or database management service or database cloud service, big data analytics, business process monitoring, mobile services, developer cloud service, Java cloud service, where you have Java applications or DBMS, IoT, all those are part of platform as a service, which means platform is provided by, by the cloud vendor, but 
on top of that application you built, it's the customer's responsibility. Platform is the cloud vendor responsibility. From software as a service, you have things like Microsoft, Workday, Cerner, Salesforce, SAP, NetSuite, Oracle Fusion applications. These are some of the examples of software as a service. So the next question comes is, hey, I am so and so or I'm already working as a as a on that particular skill set. Which one should I learn first? Should I learn first infrastructure as a service? Should I learn from platform as a service first or should I learn software as a service? Now, well, that depends on if you are working as as a DBA or apps DBA or administrator or application administrator, then you should be looking at two things. One is infrastructure as a service and then second is platform as a service. And reason why you need to learn two is because infrastructure, this platform as a service is going to be built on top of infrastructure. So whatever you need, whatever you're doing platform management, you will still do some part of infrastructure management. So if you're a DBA, application administrator, or Unix administrator, you should be working on both infrastructure as a service, and then on top of that, you should be learning specific platform as a service. So for example, if you are working as a DBA, then you should learn infrastructure as a service, then on top of that, you should also learn database cloud service. If you're managing application servers like WebLogic or Java Cloud or Java applications, then again, you should be learning infrastructure as a service and as well as the WebLogic or Java Cloud service and so on. So infrastructure as a service or platform as a service is mainly for the Unix administrator, system administrator, network administrators, application administrators, architects, all those should learn these two. If you are a functional consultant, then you should be better learning software as a service. So typical examples are HR, HRMS consultant or, or financial consultant or anything where you have, you're working on a packaged application, then you should be as a, as a business user, then you should be working on software as a service. Again, this is just a high level which I've covered. Now, if you have any question with respect to this service model or you're not sure where you should, where you need to start, then leave a comment on wherever you're watching this. There should be a comment box. So have a look at or leave a comment for me and I'll be definitely responding to your query. So, well, this is pretty much it in a short video. I'm going to in future also, we are going to post these short under 10 minute clips where we cover a specific topic in cloud and we add or we provide more and more information or answer some of the commonly asked questions. So if you like this video, why don't you start your cloud journey? There's a seven days free trial is available on k20academy.com forward slash try cloud and start your journey to cloud. Well, that's it from me, Atul Kumar from team K20 Academy and till next video, Keep learning cloud and don't forget to try out this seven days free trial journey to cloud where you learn step by step on everything related to cloud from a beginners all the way to advanced cloud architect. And if you like it, don't forget to share this video with your colleagues and friends. Bye for now.